Hello and welcome to yet another thrilling episode of Digital Success Dialogue. A little deviation from our focus topics, but a very interesting subject we are discussing today. Smart highway technology and how uh, the United States of America is navigating its economical and social growth using this technology. We have with us today head of marketing from INT, Syed Zainul Haq, and he will be in conversation with Brian D. Kelly, industry veteran and chief technological officer of Ohio Turnpike and Infrastructure Commission. Over to you, Zan. But before we begin, here is a small introductory video. A very good evening to one and all. Uh, thanks a lot for joining us for this episode of Digital Success Dialogue. And today we are here to learn. And as I was discussing with Brian before this uh, starting of the session is that today we will really understand what exactly it is. And we'll be more of students and Brian would actually lead and help us understand what we are doing today. So uh, to quickly introduce Brian and reiterate his uh, achievements, uh, since he, uh, Ishani has introduced him as the Chief Technology Officer for the Ohio Turnpike and Infrastructure Commission. Beth, Brian was recognized as one of the government's top technology doers, dreamers and drivers in public sector innovation in 2012. And he has received the Ohio Government Finance Officers Association Innovation in Public Finance Award in 2011. Prior to coming to the Ohio Turnpike, he was also the Chief Information Officer for Portage County, Ohio for more than 27 years. Thanks a lot, Brian, for joining us today. Hey, it's great to be here and great to have some time to talk about smart road technology and I think share some very interesting information with those that are listening. Awesome. So, Brian, uh, let us let us just try and understand what exactly uh, this smart technology is because we see that there are over 70% of the U.S. roads located in areas of with snowy conditions, primarily using smart technology, smart road technology. Can you help us really understand what exactly it is and how it is helping you manage these kind of weather conditions day in and day out? Sure. So in the 21st century, um, we have the Internet of Things and, and we're connecting literally billions and billions of things to the Internet. And those things include, of course, uh, computers and people and sensors and related to our discussion today, um, you know, cameras monitoring roads and um, cars as well. And so it's a very interesting time in the history of the world that we're all living in. Um, technology is rapidly evolving at a faster pace today than ever in the history of the world. And certainly in transportation, things are radically changing. We are, we are witnessing a major paradigm shift when it comes to transportation. And when I look at this, it, it, it's a transportation shift that is the last time that we saw anything like it was back at the beginning of the 20th century when we had the horse and buggy. And, and I'll talk about that a little bit later on in our discussion this morning. But with smart road technology, we're seeing technology advance where we have intelligent transportation systems that are monitoring the flow of traffic. Um, and it's doing this through sensors and cameras and computer systems. And we're leveraging the internet of things, we're leveraging what is called edge computing, um, which is very different than cloud computing. Some people um, have called uh, edge computing fog computing because um, in the cloud, you're way up and you're far away, but in the fog, the fog is closer to the road and closer to where the transactions are, are processing. And so we're, we're leveraging intelligent transportation systems. Um, we have things such as smart traffic signs that can communicate with vehicles. So that, that speed sign that's on the road, not only can a human being see it, but a car now can communicate 
with that sign and know that there is a sign telling the vehicle that it's approaching a stop sign or tell the vehicle what speed the road conditions are where that vehicle is located. Um, we're also seeing the explosion of electrification and electric vehicles coming on the road. And in the future, um, we're probably going to have in-road charging of electric vehicles. Um, electric vehicles will charge as they travel down the road. And um, we're working on a project right now with the Ohio Turnpike um, where we might start to do some pilot projects around in-road charging. There are also wrong way detection systems. So if vehicles are going the wrong way on a road, um, these electronic smart wrong way detection systems can alert other drivers and even the car that's going in the wrong direction to hopefully prevent an accident and um, prevent injury and save lives. Um, variable speed signs. These are digital signs where the speed can be changed based on the conditions of the road. And where I live, we have one section of road along the Great Lakes, Lake Erie, that gets a lot of snow in the, the wintertime. And there are a lot of whiteouts and a lot of car pileups, maybe involving 60 to 100 cars. And so our Ohio Department of Transportation has introduced um, variable speed signs where they can reduce the speed on the road um, to adjust the flow of traffic based upon the condition of the roads. And, and so we've seen a reduction in the number of, of crashes, injuries, and deaths. Um, we have construction work zone safety technology where we can alert um, the construction workers if there is a vehicle entering into a construction zone that might impact um, the vehicles in that zone or the workers. Again, hopefully to prevent injury and, and save lives. And really interesting, we now have talking cars. Um, in 2022, um, Ford Motor Company has announced that all of their vehicles coming off the assembly line in 2022 will be able to talk or communicate with one another. And so, um, cars are going to be able to talk to one another. And, and what that means is one car will be able to communicate to another car its location, its direction of travel, how fast it's going. Um, if the car ahead of you is losing traction with the road, that will alert your car. Um, if there's a traffic accident ahead, that will alert your car. And so cars will be sharing information. They'll be communicating with one another. They'll also be communicating with infrastructure on the road, um, such as traffic lights. Traffic lights and cars are going to begin to communicate to one another. So the traffic light will be telling your car when the light's going to change. If there's a vehicle coming through a red light that, that might impact you, um, your car will receive a, a warning um, allowing you to take action to avoid that crash. So we have talking cars, smart intersections, um, automatic crash detection. So when a car crashes and an airbag deploys um, in the future, there can be an immediate notification to public safety uh, that an airbag is deployed, allowing um, emergency response to immediately know of the crash and get there sooner again to um, save lives and um, help those who might be injured in that crash. Um, and so it's a very, very exciting time. And then, you know, we'll talk a little bit more about it, but then we also are now starting to see autonomous vehicles or self-driving vehicles taking the road, um, replacing the human driver. So all very exciting things with smart road technology. Again, they're evolving very rapidly. So Brian, to be honest, I was just trying to understand. I was trying to think of the future. I was just imagining, as you mentioned towards the end, an autonomous vehicle talking to each other. They know what to do and what not to do. I think uh, the world is absolutely heading towards a complete a zone which will only have a self-driving car, I think, and you are, you guys are actually testing it extensively. Yeah, I mean, you know, the thing is, I, I like to call driving a failed human experiment. I mean, we do not drive cars very well. There's over a million people that die every year in the world in traffic crashes. 
And in the United States, we average between 37 to 40,000 people die every year in motor vehicle crashes. It's the leading cause of death in, in the United States for teenagers. According to the CDC, six to nine teenagers die every day in motor vehicle crashes. And, and today, we're, we're unfortunately, we're very distracted. Um, we're on the, the smartphone while we're driving. We're checking Amazon orders. We're checking Facebook uh, posts and tweets. We're text messaging. Um, we're watching Netflix in our cars while we drive. And um, we're, we're also fatigued. Um, we're tired. Uh, some of us are not well in terms of our health condition. And so um, when you take all of that out of, out, out of the equation of driving and you let a smart autonomous vehicle drive itself, um, we're going to see a reduction in traffic crashes, injuries, and fatalities. And it's going to improve our quality of life. Um, elderly people and handicapped people that have no access to transportation will be able to have an autonomous vehicle come and pick them up, take them to the doctor, take them shopping, take them to a concert, to a park. Um, and we'll be able to get some of that time that we lose commuting to work, we'll get that back um, to be able to do activities that we actually enjoy. And so autonomous vehicles are, are coming. Uh, the technology is rapidly evolving. It's going to be safe, um, safer than it is today driving vehicles. And it's an exciting time. Awesome. So uh, one question which often uh, we all ask is, is, and since I come from a country which is always price sensitive, so uh, what are the kind of investments that you guys have so far put in all of these technologies to deploy? And uh, how are you measuring its impact as well? Well, of course, everything that I've mentioned so far in our discussion today costs money. Um, and so, you know, that's driving the investment. And in America, we're seeing major auto manufacturers such as uh, GM and Fiat Chrysler and Ford. And, and then we see new companies such as Waymo and other companies specializing in electric and autonomous vehicles. I mean, they're building new plants for electric vehicles, for autonomous vehicles. Um, and then all the technologies surrounding this. Um, and, and so, you know, we're seeing the building of a smart road ecosystem um, that certainly is, is increasing, um, you know, growth of, of the market. Um, and, and this will go on for um, many years because um, we're probably looking at the adoption of electric vehicles, autonomous vehicles to continue to evolve and increase um, over the next 25 to, to 35 years. Uh, so, uh, Brian, uh, I understand one thing which you mentioned that these cars would talk. Now, for example, when we hear of, and I'll go back and we talk about Internet of Things also you mentioned, whenever we hear these terms, we understand that we get a lot of kinds of data, various kinds of data being con ideally coming back to a central repository, and then we later are call calling it as big data. Uh, I think a lot of organizations have started to work around it. What's your uh, current uh, understanding of uh, how will this pan out when we talk specifically to driving? Are you looking at big data gradually taking this up? You guys have actually invested on infrastructure which will have smart data being collected and then you will have those optimization of data and then you, these will make an impact even to the remotest corner of the country. What's your scene there? Yeah, so um, what we're doing is we're, we're learning about how cars will talk to one another and how we as a road operator can talk to cars as well. So we began um, actually about five years ago a project where we created a 50 mile test road for uh, connected vehicle technology, allowing us to talk to vehicles and allowing uh, the vehicles to, to talk to us. And so we created this 50 mile DSRC network that uh, we were able to outfit 38 of our snow plows with this technology so that we could know from the vehicle where the vehicle is, 
the direction it's going, the speed it's growing, whether the snow plow is up or down, the salt spreader on or off, and the rate of salt being spread on the road, all of that, the temperature of the road, all of that coming from the vehicle while it's operating on the road. And so in the future, we're gonna be able to get that type of data from cars um, and from trucks and other vehicles on the road. Um, we just recently completed a, um, a pilot project with a major auto manufacturing company where they created an app that runs on a smartphone. And the smartphone connects into the infotainment system on the vehicle. And as the vehicle goes down the Ohio Turnpike, um, our traffic incident alerts, um, RSS feeds, would feed into the auto manufacturer's cloud and then um, down to the app connected to the smartphone in the infotainment center and display on the console the traffic incident information based upon where the vehicle was located. So using very intelligent um, technology to keep drivers informed of traffic conditions, um, on the road. And so in the United States, we see um, the federal government and we see state governments and public transit agencies and um, toll road operators such as the Ohio Turnpike are all working on better understanding this technology and doing pilot projects, testing it out. We did a semi-autonomous truck platooning demo uh, last fall, going across three different states, uh, Pennsylvania, Ohio, and um, Michigan. And truck platooning is where two semi-trucks or more can connect electronically, and the trucks in the platoon are controlled by the lead truck. So the driver in the first truck is uh, basically driving the other vehicles behind it. And that allows for better travel, um, a savings on, on energy consumption, and increases uh, safety as well. And so, you know, we're testing these things out. So today, all of us, in, including those listening, we can be doing one of three things about all of this technology change that's going on. Number one, we can be scared of it and frightened, and, and we can be doing nothing. And there are many today that are, are kind of paralyzed and trying to watch and see what's going to happen. Um, at the second level, there's many that are educating themselves, gaining new knowledge and um, you know, starting to, to understand these changes and how they will affect them or their agency or their company. And then at the highest level, you can be testing these things out and doing them. And that's what we're engaged in. And another cool thing that's going on is we're building integrated uh, data exchanges that will collect all of this data and then push it back out to vehicles that are on the road. So I'm involved in a project with our Ohio Department of Transportation. They're creating an event streaming platform where road data, weather data will all go into this integrated data exchange and then vehicles, as they're driving down the road, will connect to this cloud and get the data that will tell them about road closures, road conditions, weather conditions, uh, based upon where the vehicle is driving. Real, really cool stuff, right? And I see uh, one, uh, one question in the chat. Uh, Volvo and Tesla, among others, are already trying to introduce Hello. automatic okay. Are we back? Are we back? 
Yeah, and there, I, I unfortunately faced some issue. Yeah, so there was a question if you if you like to take it up at this point or uh, sure, you know, yeah. Take that so the question is, uh, Volvo, mm -hmm. Volvo, and Tesla, among others, are already trying to introduce automatic, auto-controlled vehicles within the market. What do you think could be a few drawback other than price? Well, the main thing is this technology has to evolve to the point where this technology is safe and, and where we truly have an autonomous vehicle. So, um, you know, right now we want to make sure that that technology evolves and matures and is tested out. Um, and so, you know, I, I know that Volvo and Tesla and the other auto manufacturers are, are working on this. The question is, when will it be perfected? Um, and it's probably going to be another five to 10 years until we have um, fully autonomous vehicles, what we call a level five autonomy um, on the road. But it's being tested out today. And as I said, it's continuing to, the technology is continuing to mature. Awesome. Uh, one question which comes in my mind when you talk about technology, you might have seen so. So in, uh, we often hear a lot about blockchain. We suddenly start hearing about another technology. Which technology do you think is the most exciting in this space? And what exactly you've seen happening with that particular technology? Um, well, I, I certainly think blockchain is interesting, but I think um, we still need to find um, real application for it. And um, but but one of the um, one of the most interesting technologies I see right now is artificial intelligence. And um, I think that will be very important to um, self-driving vehicles and um, the ability to level artificial intelligence um, to better understand, you know, the environment around us and what is occurring and, and what is happening real time. So, you know, it's definitely, I think, uh, right now, artificial intelligence is leading the way as, as a real game changer. Uh, Brian, one thing we also mentioned while you were talking about a lot of applications of smart road technology, you said that a lot of things will happen parallelly. Uh, agility, for example, people working in this space, IT space, uh, refer to as the go-to kind of process. And we often talk about having agile methodology across all our practice. What What's in there? Uh, agile, uh, does, uh, do you think agile can be the best way for you to have continuous, vigorous uh, innovation to happening across the whole industry? Or do you think you will always work on a traditional model where you'll test one thing and then deploy and then wait and then uh, how is agility making an impact there? So, you know, as the evolution of this technology is occurring so quickly that um, agile is well suited towards, um, you know, innovation, right? And, and so, yes, I think agile is uh, very applicable for the technology evolutions that, that we're engaged in because the technology is changing so rapidly. Um, you don't have three to five years to develop the technology. You have to move very quickly. Um, and agile, agile is very well suited um, to that, and because it's all about vigorous evolution, and and so um, certainly it can be leveraged now in the 21st century with the technology evolution that is happening in a very rapid place space. Yeah. So, so the challenge for you is also to is. Uh, is to deploy, test, optimize, deploy again, test, optimize, right? Right, very quickly. Um, and, and Agile allows that okay. to happen. Uh, now, now, I, now I just want you to think back a year ago. So a year ago was a, a unique time for across the world. We saw a lot of innovation happening across industry. Did you, did you see something happening in your space also, something that you would really want to share with, with the audience today? Well, I think one thing is that where we are in the 21st century um, with collabor um, collaboration technology uh, allowing us to connect um, remotely um, has matured to a place that prepared us well for what we've gone through in the last year. And so the ability for companies to send their workforce home and to work remotely 
um, has kept things moving at, at a, a good pace um, in terms of um, innovation under this um, pandemic recession, as we may call it. Um, you know, for, for some, we've seen decline in revenue, um, and, and certainly we've seen that in transportation related to um, the decline in vehicles on the road and what that means in terms of um, gas tax uh, revenue and for toll operators in terms of, of toll revenue. Um, but the, the pace of innovation has not stopped. Um, it's continued to move forward um, in, in just in a different way. Um, and, and, you know, we at the Ohio Turnpike have continued to um, work on our collaborations and our, our shared initiatives, um, but we just learned to do that well remotely. So um, minimal impact, and I think we're starting to see now um, you know, the recovery out of that as things improve, um, you know, with, with COVID and our return to what we've um, identified as the new normal going forward. Absolutely. So uh, I, I've seen a lot of innovations. One interesting innovation for me was someone created a windmill right at one of one of the highways so any car passing by would actually generate or store electricity for 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 us to use so yeah i think with testing times i think we'll have a lot more innovation i i wanted to uh, now move a little back and talk about digital now digital disruptions remains to be a big challenge and as you mentioned this is one of the interesting times we've ever lived in uh, what is the most impactful digital disruption you've seen or you're waiting for, ideally outside your industry. So that would be really exciting for us to hear. Well, I, you know, again, I mean, we're we're right now part of a big paradigm shift with technology, just not in transportation, but but in all aspects of our lives. And so when we take a step back, when we step out of the box and we look at what's going on, this is an amazing time to live in. And in transportation where I work, um, if I look back, I haven't seen a change like this since the early 1900s. If we go back to, uh, let's say, 1899, at that time, um, the horse and the buggy were the major mode of transportation, not only in the United States, but, but throughout the world. And, and, and that's what people relied upon for transportation. And in 1894, there's actually an article that was written in the London Times talking about the great manure crisis because horses put down a lot of manure um, anywhere between 15 to 30 pounds a day on a street. And so the streets of London and other major cities throughout the world um, had a major problem with manure and horse urine on the streets. There were also the problem horses would actually die on the street. And, and they had to clean all of this up. And, and so um, they were looking at how do we deal with this? Well, um, in the United States, in Detroit, Michigan, uh, Henry Ford and others weren't working on the past. They weren't working on the present. They were working on the future. And, and the future that they were working on was the automobile, the combustible engine. And, um, and the Wright brothers uh, down in Dayton, Ohio, were, were um, inventing the airplane. And, and so um, after the turn of the century and uh, in, in early 1900, we started to see rapidly horses being replaced by, by um, cars. We, we saw trucks evolve. And then, of course, we saw uh, humans take flight in airplanes. And... Um, within a series of, of decades, uh, commercial aviation, we're traveling all over the world. And so we're living in a time right now where electric cars and autonomous cars are going to change our life in a way that we can't even imagine as this technology is adopted and takes the place of what we have today. And in the future, it's, it's, it's likely that we won't even own cars. Um, we will subscribe to a service 
that provides a vehicle for us. So um, that's going to be very different than the world we live in right now, right? Um, where we can, you know, have a truck come to our home today, pick us up, or a van, or a shuttle, uh, or an SUV, whatever we want. We could just subscribe to a vehicle to come pick us up and take us wherever we want to go. Pretty cool. Right. Yeah, right. The other day I was watching a little video on Uber and Netflix, and I saw that they're working on having us have helicopters, which will actually be subscribed as well. So I think the Times would have, apart from smart railroad technology, might think about smart air technology very soon as well. Yeah, in the United States, there's uh, at least 15 companies that have patents on a uh, commercial flight with unmanned aircraft. And um, already in places like Dubai, these, these aircraft are being tested out. So in the future, not only will we have autonomous vehicles on the ground, we're going to have unmanned aircraft that can pick us up and easily transport us or deliver packages to our homes. Um, and then in the United States, we're also working on a technology called Hyperloop that will propel us at speeds up to 700 miles an hour through a tube. And um, so at the Ohio Turnpike, we're actually part of a, a project looking at Hyperloop um, in the Midwest uh, between Cleveland, Ohio, and Chicago, um, which is normally about a six and a half hour drive, um, but Hyperloop will reduce that down to 30 minutes or, or so. So pretty cool. Yeah, to be honest, in future, we'll have Brian and us having to Instead of digital, I think traveling will become a lot more easier. So all those challenges of going on a Zoom call would become a lot more better if we can just have a cup of tea or coffee together. That's right. Traveling so, at a lot more faster speed. Yeah, and so I, I encourage those that are watching right now to, to seize the opportunity, seize the future, and start to educate yourself more and become a part of it. Um, become, become a part of this change um as we move forward awesome thanks brian for joining us today before i let you go i have a couple of more questions from our audience which i wanted to have a, a go at so one of the one of the audiences asked us is disruption in automotive vehicles is all good until the security protocols start getting breached what's your take on that Oh, that's very true. I mean, um, cybersecurity is a big issue um, with um, with vehicles today because the average car in the United States from about 2015 forward has anywhere from 60 to 100 million lines of software code in the vehicle. And of course, today we're connecting vehicles to the internet. Um, in 2023, GM is going to be doing over-the-air updates of their software, two cars of up to four terabytes a, an hour. Um, and so the attack surface on a vehicle uh, is very much a concern. But we have um, information sharing communities in the United States called ISACs, and we have an automotive ISAC. So these are the OEMs, the auto manufacturers, uh, those involved in technology, um, and those of us that are road operators are all part of these cybersecurity communities that are working on the challenges and the problems. So, um, you know, the good news is we, we've made a lot of advances in cybersecurity. So we, we know what has to be done. And um, I think that um, we're up to meeting those challenges. Um, the next question, it said that the roads of the future will generate electricity. Uh, very true. And I'm, I'm, as, as I said earlier, uh, we're working on a potential pilot project um, with Utah State University in a research center there um, called Aspire on in-road charging. And so, um, you know, in the future, roads will, will not only be generating electricity, but potentially they'll be um, delivering that electricity back out to vehicles 
driving on the road to charge those vehicles real time on the road. Um, there's also the possibility that vehicles could actually um, be able to put electricity back into the grid if needed. So not only would, would electric vehicles get electricity from the grid, but potentially they could give it back as well. And um, so, yeah, this is, this is exciting times. And these are things that if you go back to the 1950s, um, you know, these things were, were um, theorized in movies and um, science magazines um, that talked about the future with autonomous vehicles and electric vehicles and electric roads. And now we flash forward from the 1950s to 2021, and now we see these things becoming a reality in our lives. So very exciting. Absolutely. Uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, in future we'll be flying and everything would be automated. Uh, Brian, thanks a lot for joining us today. To be honest, I was only listening and basically trying to vision what the world would look like four to five years from now, where all of us would be in an automated car or automated helicopter. And I think you guys are already taking the first steps in that. And I expect that the world will soon follow and learn from you. Uh, it's a pleasure that you joined us and actually uh, helped us really understand uh, what the world would look like in 2025 and beyond uh, any any comments that you would like to end up with yeah again as i said embrace the times that we're in um, educate yourself uh, look for ways for you to become part of it um, because the time that we live in is really going to change and improve um, not only our lives but the lives of, of those um, in this world in the future so this is an exciting time um, embrace it. Don't be afraid um, and um, become part of it. And again, I appreciate you for the time that we've had this morning to share conversation and share insight into this uh, new world that's rapidly evolving right before us. Thanks a lot, Brian. Thanks a lot for joining in. Thanks a lot, viewers, for joining in for another episode of Digital Success Dialogue, we look forward to getting a lot more in industry veterans like Brian and educate of what the industry is moving towards with the help of digital. Have a good rest of the evening and in US, have a good day at US. Thanks a lot for joining in. Thank you.